Hi, this is Techzilla back again with another video. And this time we're going to look at the Huawei P10 Plus. Still worth it four months later? Well, in this video, I'll give you my thoughts and we will find out if it can still compete against the latest flagships. Hit my intro music. First off, let me show you where I bought it from. Wanda Mobile, a solid company with great positive feedback, and they currently sell it for £588. I bought the gorgeous blue version which looks stunning with the textured back. The version that Wanda Mobile sell is the full international version, model number VKYL29. It comes with 128 gigs of built-in storage, expandable up to 256 gigabytes using a micro SD card, running 6 gigabytes of RAM with the tried and tested Kirin 960 chipset. Octa-core CPU comprised of 4 times 2.4 GHz Cortex A73s and 4 times 1.8 GHz Cortex A53s. Topping this off is a Mali G71 MP8 GPU. Now I know a lot of you out there will be asking me what bands this phone has. Well just have a look at this screenshot and you can work it out for yourself. The Huawei P10 Plus comes in a premium looking box. What's inside? A SIM ejection tool, the standard books and leaflets, a set of very Apple looking earphones, USB-C charging cable and a UK power brick so no adapter needed here. The build is metal which feels great in hand and is solid because the version I have with the textured back known as diamond cut it prevents a barrage of fingerprints spoiling the overall look. On top of the phone we have the IR blaster and a microphone. On the right side we have a volume rocker and power button with a hint of red and a texture. At the bottom we have a speaker, microphone, charging port and 3.5mm headphone jack. On the front we have the earpiece which doubles as a second speaker, sensors, camera and LED notification light. And at the bottom we have the fingerprint sensor, on the back we have the dual cameras and dual tone LED flash and laser autofocus. The screen is a 5.5 inch IPS Neo LCD panel which holds up very well. Colours are pretty balanced and rich and tend to be on the cooler side of the spectrum. Eye comfort mode is available so those of you night owls out there won't suffer eye strain late at night. The screen is bright and vibrant and easy to read in direct sunlight. The only issue is the lack of oleophobic coating but it does come with a screen protector already applied so I suggest leaving it in place until you get yourself a decent tempered glass screen protector like the one I have here. Let's take a look at the cameras next. On the back we have a dual camera setup comprising of a 20 megapixel and 12 megapixel lens with an f1.8 aperture, OIS, famous Leica optics, phase detection and laser autofocus and topping it off dual LED dual tone flash. 4K recording is also present so we have all the big hitters on board this mini powerhouse. The front facing camera is 8 megapixels with an aperture of f1.9 which beats many of the recent flagships which have chosen to go with only 5 megapixels. Let me show you some shots I've taken using the Huawei P10 Plus and let me know below what you think. Have you ever felt Are you listening? Damn.
Now let's talk about battery performance with a non-removable 3750 milliamp hour battery on board. The P10 Plus easily lasts me a full day achieving over 6 hours of screen on time on average using a mixture of LTE and Wi-Fi. Watching YouTube eats the battery at a rate of around 12% per hour. Fast charging is also present. 0-50% charging takes around 30 minutes. One hour of charging results in the battery reaching around 89%, with the remainder of 11%, strangely taking another 40 minutes. Battery life is not as good as I thought it should be, giving me average results at best, even after several firmware updates. When it comes to performance, the P10 Plus may no longer be considered a beast, because of the latest chipsets to adorn most of the 2017 flagships, such as the Snapdragon 835, but it can still handle everything that is thrown at it. Games run with very little slowdown or frame rate drops, and everyday tasks perform without missing a beat. The Kira 960 has been honed over the past months and streamlined, and even though it is more akin to a Snapdragon 821 in performance, the 6GB of RAM help greatly with multitasking and, true to Huawei's word, the phone and chipset refused to slow down. Huawei decided to go the HTC route with the main bass and mid-range speaker in the bottom of the phone and the higher frequencies coming from the earpiece. The headphone jack output unfortunately is not as good as I experienced sound that was average at best through any headphones I tried and although acceptable sound quality is definitely not the best for sure compared to rival flagships like the HTC U11 Samsung Galaxy S8 and LG's lineup of flagships like the LG G6. Just have a listen to the samples being played from the Huawei P10 Plus and you let me know below what you think of the sound quality from this dual speaker setup. This is Techzilla, I'm back again with another video. This time we're going to be taking a unboxing and sort of first impressions hands on the Samsung Galaxy Note Fan Edition. Now, this I bought from Wanda Mobile, it's around £615, something around that. I'll leave links down below where you can pick this up from. Now, let's sum up the pros and cons. Pros are, one, build quality is fantastic and anyone not wanting a glass phone, then this will meet your needs. A nice weight, solid build and attractive to look at. Two, the cameras are very good and produce photos and videos that, are, that can still rival the latest flagships in 2017. Three, plenty of features on board such as knuckle gestures, dual camera effects and double tap. Four, dual speakers which give a nice loud quality sound which I have very little complaints about. 5. 6 gigabytes of RAM helps multitasking and day-to-day -day performance giving the P10 Plus the lungs to breathe. And 6. 128 gigabytes of built-in storage is an added bonus when you consider what Samsung, Apple and LG charge for larger storage options, let alone if these options are available in your region. Now moving on to the cons. 1. No oleophobic coating on screen. At this price range, it is unforgivable in my honest opinion. I know most people will use a screen protector, but that's not the point. A big oversight, Huawei. 2. Battery life is not as good as it should have been, especially with a 3750 milliamp hour battery. Standby drain is not great on LTE, and screen on time is just average at 6 hours. 3. The headphone output is average at best, with most rivals simply sounding higher quality with much more punch and drive. 4. The cameras could do with a few small tweaks here and there to really show what they are capable of. For example, less artifacting when panning the camera quickly, but these are minor gripes. And finally 5. 
Single button operation can be tricky to use and I found myself going back to using on-screen navigation buttons. I would have preferred to have capacitive buttons either side of the home button stroke fingerprint sensor. So there you have it folks. That was my take on the Huawei P10 Plus after using it for four months. Do I recommend it? Yes and no. For the same price, you can get the latest flagships from HTC, Samsung and LG. And phones like the OnePlus 5 can also be thrown into the mix. On the other hand, if you want a device which is made of metal, with great build quality and can handle anything you can throw at it, then the Huawei P10 Plus is still a fine choice, although a little expensive by today's standards. This is Techzilla signing out. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons and share this on all your social media as it helps me out. Until next time, stay safe my friends and I will see you real soon. Peace.